Okay, good morning everyone. We're going to get started here. Welcome back for day two of our working group meeting. Um, today, again, we're going to focus on a couple of themes, some deeper um, dive into partnership building and um, measuring success and metrics development. Um, but this morning, we'll be, again, talking about partnership building, um, thinking about how we can build better successful partnerships, um, how we can engage across industries, um, consider some of the unique perspectives that each industry has, um, and then again trying to bring this all together um, to help create more effective um, habitat conservation on the ground. Um, to start us off, um, we have Brent Hogland, who is the CEO and Chief Scientific Officer at Sand County Foundation. Um, he has quite a, a colorful bio here. I enjoyed reading it. Um, after receiving his PhD in ecology from the University of Georgia, um, he took a stint as state director of the Nature Conservancy in Wisconsin and then became president of Sand County Foundation in the late 1980s, when, according to Brent, that foundation experienced a lapse in good judgment. Um, he has a conservation um, experience dating back to the 1960s and at his alma mater at the University of Minnesota in Duluth, he was a leader in northern Minnesota's Earth Day in 1970. Having been elected to the university's Academy of Science and Engineering, he is now allowed to return with free parking. Much of his conservation and habitat management interests developed in Boy Scouts and for which he was selected as the American Legion's Boy Scout of the Year in 1966. So please help me welcome Brent. Good morning. You know, it's a great meeting when you come to a place where you learn stuff. And uh, so uh, Bob uh, Toy told me a lot I needed to know about Omaha yesterday. Thank you. And how it was that it didn't, town didn't start until Abraham Lincoln said it was okay. Um, one of the things that I've learned in the, uh, thank you, Bob, and there are other things I've learned, like Christopher's talk about uh, the importance of Aldo Leopold's land ethic in terms of recognizing land health. The uh, thanks to the sponsors, thanks to you all, thanks to the people who are leading different sessions, and uh, I appreciate this opportunity. It's been teed up in large part by partners, colleagues, if you will, that uh, I'm fortunate to engage with at Sand County Foundation. Uh, here today with us is Neil Palmer. Uh, Neil Palmer and I are both older than dirt. And the uh, fact is, is that we began working, well, he isn't, I am. Uh, we began working together in the early 1990s on corporate issues to improve habitats with monitoring, measurement, management, and a desire to do well by the land and do well by the companies. We'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. I'm also uh, privileged to work with Alec Eccles, known to many of you. Uh, he holds down the fort for us uh, in the uh, Virginia area, as well as Craig Fisnick and others. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure and I thank you. I will say this, that if you have not been to the fir forests in Mexico where the monarchs are, go. Uh, it's as magnificent an experience as the sandhill cranes lifting off the plat. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget being there last a week, a year ago, February, lying on my back. Uh, you're, you go to these places and you're supposed to be quiet. I think Eric that that's uh, Sox who's here I would validate that. So I was lying on my back um, and the butterflies started to lift off as they do. And I'm not saying anything new to many of you, but um, it's quiet and then the butterflies, the monarchs lift off. And in this case, they stayed low at about a meter and a half off the ground. Unlike the uh, sandhill cranes lifting off the plat where you can't hear yourself think, you think hard and then you hear the butterfly wings. Uh, they're not hitting each other very much, but it's a stunning experience. It's an auditory experience as well as a visual one. That's what we're playing for and uh, I encourage you to go. 
So uh, four things, goals, relationships, work, party, a little bit about Sand County Foundation, uh, which I have here in the, uh, from 1967, uh, we started. Uh, we have moved forward a bit in terms of how we operate. We have not moved forward at all in terms of what we're committed to. This is, believe it or not, our uh, statement of vision from uh, at 1967. Voluntary partnership of committed private landowners. Partnership private landowners. Uh, so coming on 50 some years with that solid commitment. Our projects, and this is really taken, uh, as you would imagine, pretty much uh, right out of uh, what I'll call a handbook, a Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold published in 1949. Uh, key, individuals responsible. Uh, that's at the corporate, the agency, uh, the landowner level. Uh, the, the chickens come home to roost, so to speak, on one or other of our shoulders. Uh, the um, goals that we choose to work with have to be in common. It doesn't mean we uh, do everything uh, commonly, but it means that pertinent to how we work together to improve land health, there is commonality and agreement and we are all putting our shoulders to the same wheel. The uh, measurement, and I'll say a little bit about that, uh, we see baseline inventory as a critical but often missing part of our projects. Uh, it, to jump to a punchline right away, I will say that in our experience, the aspect of a solid sound partnership project that's most often ignored, dismissed, derided, or discarded is monitoring. And I can't make that plea strongly enough that you can't manage what you don't measure. The uh, science, uh, independent review, publication when appropriate in peer-reviewed journals, Increasingly, we're finding that the ag industry journals, the technical journals that support the power industry, the rights-of-way industry, are also places to get science reported, science put in the hands of people who can use it, and can help challenge us all to do our work on the basis of what I'll call the, uh, an essence of science, which is continuous improvement through hypothesis testing and more. Uh, innovation, uh, there's uh, always going to be something new under the sun. We should find it because there are ways to improve land health, cut our costs, make things better. Uh, I'm not saying necessarily we will uh, achieve land health faster, but certainly we can find ways to innovate. There's a dimension of innovation that we're finding really exciting through our Leopold Conservation Award, and that is the innovation of social relationships. Uh, and that takes me down, of course, to enjoyment and satisfaction, key to our work, uh, and hence why I put at the beginning the importance of having a party. Uh, partner, so def let's define our terms. I want to stress here that uh, a person, can, a corporation can also be a person. We heard that about 11 years ago, and it, the same thing is true, if you will. An agency is also a person as far as we're concerned, but partnership, shared risks and profits, the state of being a partner. The red, the risks. Uh, we don't always succeed. Uh, in fact, if we're reaching audac with audacity and uh, some uh, even assertiveness, uh, not everything's going to work. Uh, we have to be aware of that and not overpromise uh, profit. Profit is green on the land and green, as far as we're concerned, in another important dimension of landowners, whether they be individual, family, corporation, or, or agencies, and it's the green of the checkbook. You can't be green if you're in the red. People have got to make money at this, and it's a critical part of how we see our role in Sand County Foundation, particularly in the sphere of innovation around and management combined that, if measured, can demonstrate to people 
the green eye shade, sharp pencil people, who in fact control, as we know it, so many of corporate and agency decisions. So the uh, uh, research and reporting on partnerships is vast. Um, how many uh, libraries do you want to go to? Uh, but a common feature of them are the kind of headlines that I gave you, is goals. I'm stressing uh, business in a way because I think that J.P. Morgan, like him or not, uh, boiled it down to a large part of what's going to make it a successful partnership, which I'm going to boil down to character and trust. Uh, we know that business partners are out there to make money, fair enough. Uh, when I think of power, I think of the particular agency we get to be able to share with others the value of our successes, and that's power in communication, not power in the manner of political influence, even though it might seem that way. Uh, health partnerships, an enormous field of study. For those of you interested in serious exploration of partnerships, improving people's health has got so much relationship, if you will, to land health. Uh, I'm finding that this is a realm where a lot of value can be gained. Um, Party. There are limits. Military partnerships so show us that there are many cases where you never want to party with the people you have to align yourself with. Uh, I don't need to give you examples, but I will say that even J.P. Morgan sent a limit on how much fun you can have when he says, I'll do business with anyone, but I'll only go sailing with gentlemen, or gentlewomen, as the case may be. Um, so, we have done, as by my tally, about 92 projects during the uh, years I've been with Sand County Foundation. What unites them is commitment to land health, the shared goals, the willingness to work on a particular aspect of a larger venture, and to roll up our sleeves together and so forth. So I've got several out of that 92 and I, I'm going to give you another punchline, is that of the 92 that we have had that I would regard as successful, measured by attributes like does it continue after we've left? Does it make the impact on the ground that we set out to succeed upon? Are there peer-reviewed publications, for instance, for those that don't make it otherwise? Um, by my count, we failed in my time, and those are on my shoulders, we failed about 21 times. Um, so do your own arithmetic, 92 divided by uh, 21, I would say that we're about 4.4. .4. Um, I, I hope we get to 5. Uh, I doubt we'll do that in my lifetime, but uh, there. This project, like so many, has engaged active partners. I choose it because industry is key to making this happen. The other key to making it happen is landowners who are audacious enough and willing enough to engage both with us, meaning Sand County Foundation's people on the ground, or our partners' people on the ground, to tackle an issue in which better agriculture can also be of benefit to industries who have to dispose of something I'm not going to say because that's the most god-awful, unwieldy title for a project I've ever known of. But uh, farmers, Sand County Foundation, there's the list. The critical thing is farmers improving water quality using gypsum. A series of photos to show Dan Johnson, a uh, willing farmer, uh, a very profitable, uh, engaged, uh, conserving farmer. Uh, uh, thank goodness for Dan. He's willing to help us build weirs. He's willing to go out in the middle of snowstorms and run the equipment, set it right. So West Branch of the Milwaukee River, uh, close to where um, We Energies has fly ash. The uh, fact is, is that this stuff works. We've uh, got an experimental validation of it. It's not been replicated in enough years. But pictorially, you see heavy dirt coming off of farms, not just ants, but other ones. Before application of gypsum, the second row shows amelioration of that and much more phosphorus, 
not dissolved phosphorus, but solid phosphorus bound to silt, stays on the land. There's every indication of success. Monitoring critical, uh, soil and water quality is increasing. Uh, I would say that the water is going up. I can't attest to whether or not we're looking at more organic matter in the soils. Here's a case where we're, there's an intersection of human health in a broad sense. Uh, it's the sense that deer represent a threat to living humans on the roadways. Uh, the most dangerous uh, mammal wildlife in North America, other than mosquitoes, if you play Trivial Pursuit, is, here's the correct answer, is deer. 270 some people killed by deer each year, it's, the number's going up. There are issues in what we do that are actually truly moral issues, and this is one. Uh, fewer deer means fewer dead people. In the case that I'm exploring here in a tiny moment or two, in northern Pennsylvania, the partners engaged in Kindu Equality Deer Cooperative. A measure of success here is the social acceptance in which the title of the project is a prominent part of the advertising of where you are and where you are going. We worked with a fairly uh, straightforward pictorial model. The key point is that human hunting is the primary predation component. Northern Pennsylvania doesn't have gray wolves yet, uh, but it does have people with rifles. Um, the satisfaction goes up. The fun here for hunters who are serious is that the number of big bucks in a re regimen where doe hunting is encouraged, not shooting for antlers first, but shooting in a way that you bring home safely venison of the doe kind first, the herd gets uh, slimmed down, trimmed down, the animals get bigger. There's more, for those people who hunt for the wall, not the freezer, there's more to take home to put on a big wall if your spouse agrees. The uh, value of this is in terms of forest economy, deer drop, fewer deer people, deer people collisions occur. The value of this project for improving Forest health is incredible. Fences taken down, black cherry reproducing without fear of losing it all to the deer, forest wildflowers uh, proliferating. Here's a summary of uh, where we stand with that. Next is Cooperative Sagebrush Initiative, and it's been said before by yesterday by Fish and Wildlife Service people. The Cooperative Sagebrush Initiative was a, in, uh, a precursor, and this wasn't said, but a precursor to the successful effort to aggressively promote sagebrush habitat management that is part of the uh, success in the candidate species of sa uh, sage grouse being removed from consideration for listing. A critical part of what we've moved to in Sand County Foundation's work in the last uh, decade is assisting landowners, both private, family, corporate, uh, in developing agreements and approaches, all of which can be better for biota, better for the bottom line, and better for the security of the organization in terms of possible impingement by the Endangered Species Act. We, together with a number of partners, established a cooperative sagebrush initiative I want to call out that term sagebrush because our commitment is to habitat nearly always. If you get better habitat, you carry a lot of things with you. Single species management, in our opinion, uh, it, 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 it is pale by contrast. Uh, one of the goals early on, preclude the NIST list, need to list the sage grouse, and that has been successful. Uh, some green on this one, um, and we are in many respects now a small player uh, in a, uh, a big effort. Back to Wisconsin, again engagement of industry. This is where Neil and I first had active engagement other with, than with executive seminars. Landscape scale by Midwestern standards of Savannah, 
restoration. It's helped us lead towards uh, work like this and the CETA National Wildlife Refuge, uh, paying for itself in many ways. This doesn't necessarily pay for itself, but it shows that active intervention with equipment can help to bring back species that are there in the soil. Uh, independent review. Uh, two of those people that are in that photo have been elected to the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, we are so proud of our engagement with leading scientists. We have had advice, counsel, and perspective from nine members elected to the National Academy of Sciences, and we feel that that's a distinctive advantage that we offer to our corporate agency and private landowner partners. Uh, uh, there, there's a man beloved to me who's late, uh, he, he's no longer with us, Noel Cutright. On the far left, as you see it, a um, longtime stalwart for birds, uh, great conservationist in many ways. His passing is a real loss, and he was a critical part of this effort. That work relates to rare species, particularly some of the um, skippers that are there, uh, of course, the kind of blue butterfly. Uh, this one I'll do in brief. Uh, it's regarded by some people as the gold standard for dam removal leading to active river restoration. Together with those partners, took out all of the remaining, which was four, low head dams in the Bear River, about 118 miles. And uh, the river runs through it again. Many, many partners, almost more of a coalition. Uh, better safety lower cost of management, fisheries, economy, cost reduction. We're long gone from that, but that's, that project is growing. It's growing because a cleaner, healthier river, a better fishery is a gateway to economic activity that's good for the community. So Baraboo, Reedsburg, Laval, North Freedom. Uh, we have stretched ourselves. We no longer do. We, we've worked in four countries in Africa where we believe the same principles apply. Uh, in Tanzania, uh, we were the progenitors, if you will, together with Tanzanians of the um, Tanzania Natural Resource Forum. It is the only nationwide uh, civil society entity still going, uh, going in Tanzania. We think that that's a critical uh, legacy. We're proud of that, uh, even though there are a variety of uh, problems with that whole thing. One of the reasons we left work in Africa is we were unwilling to pay bribes. And when you've been approached uh, or approach a chief of a village and region in Zambia, and you're made to walk up to him on your knees, and he won't talk to you unless you promise to give him a new Mercedes, you know you're in the wrong country. Um, failures. Uh, 21 by my account, I think they are better learning lessons in many respects than successes. The failures are on my shoulders, uh, 21 of them. Uh, I still go home at night and put my head on the pillow. Um, I'll be somewhat frank, this is not a Romana Clef. I have no insinuation. Uh, but I will give you a bit about how we responded to some of the issues. Uh, I would say that, and I'm not going to read those, of course, but one of the distances is cultural. And um, here's where my Norwegian background comes into play, is, is that so uh, because of my Norwegian uncles, aunts, grandfathers, and such like that, I am unwilling to work with Swedes. So there, there are limitations on what I will do. <laughs> they, they, they can go back to Stockholm or Göteborg. I don't care. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, the misaligned aims, uh, expectations that are unrealizable, not supported by all the parties, critical part. At the bottom, ask yourself, how much space does it take in a report to credit everyone else, okay? I, I did a count uh, of it, and in some of our projects, if you dim diminish the role and don't at uh, give attribution to other partners, it costs you a tweet. I've never done a tweet. I won't do a tweet in my life, but uh, that, that's about what it is. Why don't we thank our partners and recognize them? Um, 
the process was rejected. And to reinforce what I said early on, a big part of the process that I see as common to our failures, and in fact, common to some of what we might call successes, is lack of monitoring. You've heard that three times now, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, some of our coalitions, our partnerships are actually coalitions, they're too big. One might ask how big is a partnership? Uh, I, I go home at night and my wife tells me that if our partnership is three, it's at least one too many. Uh, and uh, there are some elegant partnerships of two. Uh, one that I'm attracted to is in Germany, it's developing in which a TV station is partnered with the butterfly people and uh, one of the states of, of uh, Deutschland for uh, butterfly monitoring. Isn't that cool? So the TV station is paying the butterfly people to go out and count butterflies. They get product to put on the news or whatever they do with it. The butterfly people do better things for the butterfly. And I, don't, I think it's Ryan and Fault, but I, I could be wrong. Um, simple. Two entities, both of them working towards what they see as their green ends, um, and many of, in my opinion, the more elegant, more successful, cheaper partnerships are two. Uh, I'm going to close with this because it represents to me an opportunity to look for examples of success, particularly for corporate and agency land being owned and managed. The Forestry Commission in England has a 10-year conservation strategy, not on their own, but with the butterfly people. I forget the name of the group. The Forestry Commission is challenged by too many Douglas fir trees, too many alien trees, impinges upon uh, UK's red squirrel habitat. That is right out of the playbook, if you will, of the Savannah Partnership because they need to take those trees out, just like the Savannah Partnership in Adams, Juneau, uh, Florence, uh, Bayfield, Sauk, Columbia counties did in our experience. Some of these can pay for themselves, but they needed the monitoring. The butterfly people also bring in the people who measure soil quality, and I'm thinking of standpoint about how much one can learn from a gram of soil. Well, these people, the butterfly people and the Forestry Commission people, understand that valued forest trusts depend on healthy soil, and they're, they're building. They're, they're building to something of even greater consequence than making habitat better for rare butterflies in the UK. By the way, if you're a rare butterfly in the United Kingdom, not even the queen can save you from being tagged, uh, that these, these people are nuts, um, that, uh, but the Forestry Commission gets help, the Forestry Commission gets publicity, the Forestry Commission can make some more money to better manage the stands, there's now a growing commitment to soil health, and the bottom line of green that they are agreed upon, upon a 10-year strategy, so these are not short-term people, this is not a two to three-year project is favorable conservation status for the butterflies and moths identified. And that's really out of what we are all here to do with respect to monarchs. I'd be happy to take questions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, there is an advantage to having uh, no questions, and that is that Iris can uh, get up here even faster and move it along. Thank you so much for that really interesting talk. Um, so, hi. Hey, hi, hi. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you, you can't tell. Um, 
you, so you talked about one of the challenges that was a contributing factor in some of the failures being distance of various kinds, dis, uh, physical distance, cultural distance. Over the years of working on all these partnerships, have you found any strategies to be useful for helping to reduce some of the cultural reduce some of the cultural differences? Yeah, and hey, are there any accountants in the room? Okay. That, uh, believe it or not, in Zambia, we made major headway with a, a, us funding uh, two things in association with ecotourism projects in near the Slawangwa uh, uh, National Park in northern uh, Zambia. We paid for two things, and improved uh, uh, health clinics and accountants. Uh, uh, true story. So um, the accountants were gateway to several things. Uh, one is money is a common language. These people banked, get this, they banked in Copenhagen. Um, that, would you rather put your money in Denmark or in Lusaka? Bank, uh, dare I say it? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to bet on banking in Denmark. Always needed too. One of the fun things that was after a year after the accountants started to do their work, and we brought accountants from the UK and from Germany to train um, accountants in those villages. That leads to the kind of thing that uh, Amy's question is about. In one of the villages, they had no ability, they had no electricity. So what they would do to get check on their bank accounts in Copenhagen is they would choose a teenage boy uh, on uh, Friday morning, and they were roughly in the same time zone. He would get on a bicycle, hooked up to a generator, hooked up to a battery, hooked up to a satellite phone, and under the uh, watchful eyes of the German and uh, UK accountants that were there coaching. He'd pedal that darn bicycle, there would be electricity, uh, they would communicate over the satellite phone with the banks in Copenhagen, and those villages would know how well they were doing. Um, it seems improbable, I appreciate your question. Money can be a great means in, in monitoring of it to reduce cultural differences. Stan. Um, Denmark is awful, awfully close to Sweden. Uh, <laughs> it, it is, and I don't hold that many grudges against Denmark compared okay. to <laughs> um, Enlightening presentation, full of humor. I very much appreciate it. The, uh, on the, um, the message that you're sending us away with is monitor, monitor, and monitor. And um, how can we encourage companies to invest more in monitoring? Through our Leopold Conservation Award program, we're getting, starting to get some answers to that. We've got that program to recognize outstanding land stewards in now 14 and a growing number of states. Uh, in an example, to build upon a little bit about what you and Neil and I talked about yesterday, we're finding that small companies in South Dakota who put their money into support of this project see the landowners as being their impetus to do to support monitoring by other clients. So get this, landowners like the Jorgensons in Ideal South Dakota doing a great job of soil health monitoring convince bankers that the value of the land that they have as collateral it's better when soil health is better. And it's just a small example of those banks starting to say, you know, we're going to put our money where people are measuring. I'm, I'm not getting right to your question, but I love small hometown answers. Yes? You have such a wide range of projects that, that um, that the uh, foundation worked on, how do you find, um, how do you select what, what's being worked on? What projects you choose to work on? We, we choose to work on those that have a nexus with a, a strong concern, whether it's a social concern, uh, or uh, which is the deer vehicle collision issue, which I would have to say is one of our failures. We have not, we were not successful, but there's a nexus. 
human deaths and what you can do out on the land to incentivize hunters to do a better job. It's good for the deer, it's good for the people on the highways and so forth. That's an example. In the Baraboo River, uh, the case was uh, the city of Baraboo had a bad, a, a bad dam that was going to cost them a lot of money, like a million and a quarter to repair. They were challenged uh, to repair it, fair enough, uh, or take it out. Ultimately, the taking it out cost about $78,000 because they had very little money to work with. Uh, two things I'll say in terms of anecdotes that support that project and how you can break through if you don't have enough money. I saw it, I, I put up there that you can have too much. If they had had $2 million, they would have repaired the dam. That river would not have Lake Sturgeon. It would not have Shovel Nose Sturgeon. It would not have the Crystal Shiners. They made that commitment. Two people, that two, two things that happened. One is the dynamite guy. Uh, they decided to blow up that dam to, into rubble that was the size of rubble favorable to sturgeon spawning. And I'll never forget that guy drove in, he got his money, and he left the moment the explosion was over. Uh, no press conference, he's just gone, he's out of there. The other person at, at, is Governor Thompson, Tommy Thompson, an avid, committed sportsman conservationist. That project would not have happened without him. So we went into our occasional session with the governor, and he said, he said as he often did, what can I do for you today? And we answered, it's what you can do for the state, you know, da 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 da, da. There was a problem with an agency, which shall not mention, but it was not up on that list. It was a state agency, and they were blocking the removal of that dam. They didn't have any money. They weren't going to commit. And you know what he said about them? He said, look, Brent, they're a bunch of weenies. And um, uh, go, governor. And he said, we're going to call nine people. And he said, I'm going to call the lead, lead weenie. And you, you guys call six others. Without him and without that dynamite guy, this thing would not have worked. That, so that, 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 that there are a variety of things we choose to do. And you know what? A lot of them are dumb luck. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a follow-up question on the dam removal project. Um, before I worked with MDOT, I worked for an engineering and environmental consulting firm and our primary client base was owners of hydroelectric projects and we were involved in some dam removal projects and down the line they were successful in restoring the fisheries and some other critical functions but um, I'm not familiar with that river system you referred to but some of these dams that were removed had large reservoirs where people had lakefront property and after the dam removal, it went back to a riverine system. I was just curious if you ran into any of those um, issues with adjacent property owners on those projects. It happened to be a smaller river, 118-mile uh, length, about a 710-mile watershed. The, pro the where the reservoirs were were not active, uh, no, not major sites. They were dairy farm associated areas, so there was a lock involved with that, if you will. It would have been a problem. But one of the key things was the science study of sediment removal following the dam transport. That's where the people from Purdue came in. That led to some assurance that folks, in the, particularly in the state and federal agencies, that this was not be de detrimental to fish spawning. That, that was a cr critical issue, but not the one that you cite. And the one you cite is a commonplace. Yeah, and it, it was worked out because in the end it took uh, quite a few years but the fishery was improved and the, the local people were generally happy, but there was an initial. I, 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 I know Claudia is throwing darts at okay, me. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. So be, before dam removal, upstream of the lowest dam in the Baraboo, there were 11 uh, fish species, mostly carp by biomass and number. After the last dam, within two years after the land, dam was removed, there were a total of 36 species inhabiting those stretches upstream. 11 to 36, hey, and this year a guy caught a 28-pound flathead catfish. Need we say more? 
Thanks. Thank you, Brent.